Hi, I'm Mike Brody, and today I'm going to talk to you about things to consider when specifying a chemical storage warehouse with ChemStore. Okay, the first thing we consider when designing a chemical storage warehouse is uh, what type of chemicals are to be stored and how to segregate them properly from each other. We refer to the HSG 71 guidance for the segregation of storage of hazardous substances, which is on the wall here. And this is the basis for our, for our design. Okay, the first thing to consider is your size of containers. Here we're showing small container shelving, ideal for 25 litre drums, 5 litre containers, and similar. Alternatively, you might want to store 205 litre drums or IBCs or anything that's palletized boxes of small containers. This pallet racking here is ideal for that application. When designing the secondary containment for your warehouse, it's important to consider the segregation of types of chemicals. Again, referring to HSG 71, we can use the separation distances within the space itself of the warehouse, or we can use different bund segregations to achieve the separation. The next thing to consider is the type of construction of the warehouse itself. Does it need to be fire rated construction? Does it need to be insulated for thermal properties or more ventilated to allow natural ventilation? With this design, we created a perimeter bund around the outside of the store. This gave us two main benefits. Firstly, we've got a foam fire suppression system in here which generates thousands of litres of fire water runoff. This bun perimeter retains that inside the footprint of the store so it can be dealt with properly. It also acts to weatherproof the store, so our cladding comes down on top of the kerb around the outside and flashes to the outside to make sure rainwater can't get in. It's also important to consider, even in non-occupied buildings, the emergency exit routes. In this case, at the end of each aisle way within the pallet racking area, We've got an exit route, so if there was a fire further into the warehouse, you've always got somewhere to escape. Also worth noting is your temperature storage requirements. If you're just trying to prevent frost build up inside the store, we can do that with static heating. Alternatively, if you want much closer control, we can install a system like this, which has a number of overhead air cooling fans, which will circulate hot or cold air to get close control within typically plus or minus two degrees. Depending on the type of chemicals you're storing inside your warehouse, you might need to consider fire suppression. This might take the form of a water sprinkler system, a gas suppression system, or in this case, a foam system. We pipe, pump in our water supply here at high pressure. It mixes with a foam suppression, and it runs through these generators, literally filling the warehouse with a foam, extinguishing the fire. If you're storing hazardous chemicals on site, you might need to consider additional safety features. For example, we have a tank shower here with a 1200 litre drench and a foot-operated activation. Depending on the type of chemicals you're storing in your warehouse, we can apply a different type of floor coating to suit those chemicals, whether it be anti-static, anti-corrosion, or anti-slip. So ventilation is another consideration. This can be achieved through natural air vents throughout the store, or in this case, forced ventilation. Here we have ventilation at low level to withdraw the flammable vapors from inside the store through, in this case, an ATEX fan, because we're dealing with flammable atmospheres, up to a high velocity cowl, to disperse the vapours above roof height of the building. So those are some of the main features to consider when designing a bulk chemical store in the UK. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact us at the information below.